Hello and welcome back to Afterlife SMP. In the last episode, we built our beautiful lake down by the cabin as well as our magnificent watchtower. And from its lofty peaks, we've been able to get a bird's eye view of the surrounding terrain of the forest itself and it's helped us formulate a roadmap of what we want to do in the area. We also had a visit from GP who gifted us a delicious bottle of maple syrup and I'm sure it's going to be the star of tomorrow's breakfast show. GP also signed the book which I think is more important so we now have two signatures from two visitors in our book and we still have a couple to go but we'll get there eventually. But right now it's time to start working on today's projects and I have a little bit of a problem. In fact it's quite the opposite of the problem I had in the last episode where I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. This time around I have too many things that I want to do and taking care of them all is going to take multiple episodes. So I think the most difficult decision today is going to be which project to start with. Now there are two routes we can go. The first is the aesthetic route, build something that looks awesome but doesn't serve much of a purpose. Or we can go the practical route and build something that can actually serve us practically but perhaps not as visually appealing. On the aesthetic side, we've got the village here, which I want to convert into some log cabins, some chalets, where people who come and visit the park can stay, but we have this overhanging chunk of rock over the lake here, and we're gonna need to remove all of that. Once we do that, we'll have a beautiful open area over here with the lake, but as you can see, it's gonna be quite a task. Now, if you're concerned about me displacing the villagers, don't worry, they have all mysteriously vanished. I promise I had nothing to do with it. In fact, I am quite sad that they are gone. It completely ruins any plans I might have had for a villager trading center later. And it also makes one of the projects that I want to tackle right now a bit more difficult. But getting back to the planning, as you can see, once we remove this big chunk of land over here, we'll have a beautiful open view of the lake and perhaps we can work in some river rafting, some canoeing experiences into the area. And over here we have another piece of land that needs to go. As you can see, it's some really wonky terrain generation around here. And whatever we have planned for this area, we're going to have quite a bit of terraforming on our hands. So that covers one of the ideas that I have, but I think today it might be prudent to go a bit more practical. Now, if you've been watching some of the other members' videos, you might be aware that there's a bit of an economic power struggle going on on the server at the moment. And the driving force behind it is Ash, who's been advocating for switching to a gold-based economy rather than a diamond-based economy, and honestly, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Now, even though some of the other members are pushing back against this move, you can already see some of its effects. Over here, we've got the rocket shop with new prices, which is three gold blocks per stack. We've got the diamond gold exchange where you can exchange your diamonds for gold. And over here, we have the mace race. Hang on, what the heck is going on here? Um, well, now that's just odd. So this used to be the beacon shop, um, the beacons are gone, the shop is gone, but the 20 diamonds each name tag still persists. This is extremely weird, but I'm sure it'll sort itself out soon enough. Now, if you look over here, we've got some Halloween decorations. And I must say, I am a fan of the sword going through the jack-o'-lantern. Is that dude wearing a backwards cap? Um, I'm not sure what that used to look like, but anyway... Yeah, as I said, we've got some Halloween decorations. Of course, it's getting closer to the spooky time. And I'm going to do my best to get a special Halloween episode out as well. But I'm getting a bit sidetracked here. The main issue is, of course, the gold versus diamond story. And as you can see, the prize for the Mace Race has been replaced with gold. It used to be blocks of diamonds. It is now blocks of gold. And we have a few other shops that are also dealing in gold. The Quartz Shop, for instance, is dealing in gold. I believe that some of the other shops have also converted. And we have the Gold Slime up there, which is looking pretty awesome. Now the question becomes, how long before our diamonds become worthless? Or is this just going to slide by? I'm not sure, but I want to prepare for either eventuality. And that means becoming self-sufficient, self-sustaining and getting rid of our reliance on some of these shops. The first one being the rocket shop. I go through spicy candles like they are candy and I need to start crafting my own. And for that, I am going to need a gunpowder farm. So I think that's going to be my main focus today. 
So I've been flying around here looking for the best place to put a gunpowder farm and I've decided that I don't really want to have a big ugly building in the middle of the forest. Yes, we could dress it up to look all pretty, but it's still going to be an out of place building and I think I want to hide the entire farm and by doing so keep the integrity of the nature around us intact. That means it's going to need to be underground and it would be best to do it on an elevated bit of land, which means under the watchtower is probably the best place for it. I've also been thinking what kind of farm I want to build and I think I'm going to go with the Old Faithful. But before we get started on that, there's something very, very important that I need to do. I haven't done this yet because I didn't have a name tag up until now, but here we go. Pepper has a name and just look at the big boy. Is it a cute boy? Is it a cute boy? Are you the best boy? Yes, you are the best boy. Okay, now that Pepper's been named, let's get back to business. Now I've settled on building the farm under the watchtower, which means it's going to be nestled in the hill under the tower. And I've also settled on what type of farm I want to build. I'm going to go with the one that I've been building for ages. It works well. I built a different one in my last world. It didn't work quite as well as I had hoped. But building the regular farm means I'm going to need some cats. And in order to get some cats, I'm first going to need some fish. So I'm going to scour the river, find a nice place where I can get a ton of salmon. And then I'm going to need to find a village with some cats in it. As I said, the village behind the raging station has been mysteriously abandoned. And I'm going to need to travel to find a new one where I can get at least two cats. So this river over here is very well stocked with salmon. However, this is where that one glitch that I've been having is kicking in once again. As soon as I get on the water, everything around me turns opaque. Just look at that and I can see absolutely... Oh, hang on. This might actually work in my favor. I can still see the entities in the water. I can still see the squid and the salmon. And this actually makes it easier to find and hunt them down. So I'm going to get about a stack of salmon. You know how fickle cats are. They might love you on one salmon. It might take 10 or 20. I just want to make sure that I have enough to tame at least two cats. And then, of course, I still need to breed a bunch of them. So let's go fishing. I've got almost a stack of salmon. I'm traveling to a village to go and find some cats, but I need to restock my spicy candles. As I said, I'm going through them like candy. And this is why I'm going to need to get my gunpowder farm going. Now, it might look like I'm working with a plan, but to be dead honest, I have no idea where to find a village that still has some villages that is untouched. I literally just picked a direction and I am flying blindly, hoping to run into a village. I think I'm going in the wrong direction. That is heading towards spawn and I don't think there's a village over that way. So let's go in this direction and hope we run into one. So we've got a bit of a mixture of success and failure. I managed to find a village, but it doesn't seem like there are any cats about. I don't really know how they spawn or when they spawn, but it seems that this village is completely devoid of kitties. I've been here for about 10 minutes. I haven't heard a single meow. I haven't seen a solitary feline anywhere. So I think I am wasting my time over here. Also, I need to get back home because apparently Ash wants to pay me a visit and that just strikes me as a little odd. Him being the driver behind the gold movement and all. So I think I need to go meet up with Ash and see what he has to say. But before we do, I'm just going to make one more round here. It would be really nice if I could return home with at least one cat, but I don't think that's going to happen. It's quite a large village as well, so it is really strange that there are absolutely zero cats about. Anyway, let's go meet Ash. Um, okay, hang on. Got mic issues once again, and let's see. Hello? Ah, hello. Oh my goodness, I've been clicking the wrong friggin' button. <laughs> <laughs> that That's sucks. All good. Anyway, how are you, Ash? I'm good. I love your tower. That's so cool. Oh, thanks, Whoa. man. Uh, what, what you, you, oh, sorry. So, These are my phantoms. I. Uh, okay. You might notice my eyes. I haven't slept in a little bit, you know? Yeah, no, no. I see they're looking a little bit red there. Yeah, they're a little little bloodshot. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Okay. You know, sleep deprivation happens. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what you been up to? Warning. This audiovisual content has been deemed classified by the MIA. 
repeated attempts to access this classified information will result in prosecution to the fullest extent of the law. Okay, so I felt like hiding out in the closet a little bit, but here we are. I'm feeling braver and it's time to get back to work. Now, one of the things that came up during my meeting with Ash was, of course, that my nether portal isn't hooked up to the roof of the nether yet, which means people can't access the ranger station as easily as they should. It means they have to fly all the way over here, and if they don't know exactly where I am situated, they're going to have a tough time visiting. I want as many people as possible to come and bask in the glory of nature over here. That means I need to hook up my nether portal to the roof. Now, I've been thinking about what the best way of doing this would be, and I've decided that I'm going to go old school on this. I'm going to do it the easiest way I can think of, so I'm going to grab a few items and get going. Now, here we are in the nether. This is where my nether portal currently takes me, and as I said, I'm doing this old school, so I'm going to treat this as if I'm going up to the nether roof for the first time. So first thing I need to do is break the portal. Next, I'm going to pull it up all the way to the top of the nether, just underneath the bedrock. Now that I'm here, I need to find a piece of bedrock that is situated at 127, and I think I might have just found it here. So let's see, if I go up here and I'm standing on 125, then this should be 127. Absolutely perfect, just what I'm looking for. Now comes the dangerous part, or what many people perceive to be the dangerous part. Personally, I've never had a problem, but apparently you can get stuck in the bedrock and suffocate. So we're going to go up here, aim for the corner there, and throw a nether pearl. And we're up on the nether roof, no problem at all. Next, I need to reconstruct my nether portal right where the previous one was. And yeah, this is the exact coordinates of the nether portal at the bottom, which is now broken. So let's build a portal. And once we light this sucker up, it should be connected to my portal back home. Let's go through and see if we've done this correctly. Yes, there we go. Our nether portal is now hooked up to the roof. Let's go through and this should take us back to the roof. And there we go. Our nether portal is now successfully hooked up to the nether roof. Now all we need to do is spawn proof its top. And of course, add a little sign so people know that it is my nether portal and they can come and visit at any time. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to take a little bit of a look around. I didn't spend too much time in the nether during my tour and I haven't been back much since then. I'm just getting a little bit familiarized with all of it. But one of the things I want to look at is, of course, the gold farm. Owned and operated by none other than Ash, the man who is driving for a gold economy. Now you can see how this is a contentious thing, but I don't think he has any intention of misusing his power. At least I hope not, because, you know, the man who owns the gold makes the rules. But I must say, I really, really do love this farm. It is so industrial looking. It is absolutely beautiful. Now I've built a few gold farms in my previous worlds, but nothing like this. I've never taken the time to actually cover them up with a building and I mean that is stunning. I especially like the gold lettering over here on the front. The way that the backlighting is done is absolutely brilliant and the coloring is spot on. And the rest of the building just gives you that mining industrial feel. I mean it is awesome. I have no idea what 17 stands for, if there's any story behind it or not, but it is pretty cool. So let's just take a closer look at all of this. I mean, it's such a massive, intricate building. It looks fantastic. And yeah, we've got the big gold blocks here. He's actually used some real gold for that. And then the gold lettering. Let's just take a quick look at that. I love the difference in texture, the difference, that subtle color difference over there. It is really Really well done, Ash. This is brilliant. I love it. Anyway, enough gushing about the gold farm. Time to get back to work and get going on the rest of our project for today. Now, as I said, I am building my old faithful gunpowder farm. I found another village and I already hear a cat. That is brilliant news. So I've got my fish. Let's go see if we can find the fuzzy feline and make him our very best friend. Uh, I heard him, he has to be close, but I'm not seeing him anywhere. 
It's just chick inside the house. No, that's not the kind of little critter I'm looking for. And I finally found him. He has been hiding from me, but I am persistent. So he's just over here somewhere now. There we go. And oh, just look at him. He's absolutely beautiful. So it's time to tame this cat. And I'm just going to be patient and let the kitty come to me. Scratch that. The kitty doesn't want to come to me. I'm going after him. What started off as a patient waiting game has devolved into me chasing a cat through the woods. Uh, it's he's cornered. And there we go. We have our first cat. Oh, what a beautiful creature. So we have our first cat. We need one more at least. And let's hope the village provides. And down there we have another cat. It's a jelly and he is cornered, which means he is now my friend. And I think I have fed both these cats an extra fish. Which means if I turn them loose, they will make a tiny wee little baby cat. So let's see. Okay. One is... Jelly is stuck down here. Come on, Jelly. Get up here and come meet your friend. There we go. And... Oh, okay. That's the first animal I've actually bred. And it wasn't even intentional. But look at that. We have a baby Jelly as well. So we have three cats. And I think we can head back home. There's another jelly and I want it. So uh, come over here, come over here. Here we go. We now have four cats, which will give us a much better start. Now all we need to do is get these guys home and hopefully they won't be too much of a pain. I've got about a thousand blocks to go. And all things considered, it wasn't too much of a bother getting these guys home. I mean, oh, look at them all. They are gorgeous. We've got two tiny little jellies over here. Let's just get this one to sit. Oh, look at the little tail. Sit down, Jelly. And there we go. Okay. All of my cats are sitting. We have four cats now. So that means we are off to an excellent start. Now, I want to have about four layers to my gunpowder farm, which means I'm going to need eight cats. And I want to keep one or two cats for myself. So we've got a little bit of breeding to do. And I think the first thing I'm going to need to do is replace this barrel. For some odd reason, they want to sit on the barrels. And I had to break it to get them off. Now, while I was preparing to build my gunpowder farm, I realized that my storage is in an absolute terrible state. I've run out of storage in the house. I need to build myself a storage room. And I'm going to do that right over here. I first wanted to do it under the house, but the way that the house is standing on the pillars doesn't make that feasible. So I'm going to dig out a nice big chamber over here, just off of the path, and build myself a decent sized storage room right here. All right, I've dug out my storage room. It is looking absolutely horrible at the moment, but no matter, we're going to decorate it all pretty. I don't want it to be just a hole in the ground with a bunch of chests. I want it to be something that I can actually be proud of. So we'll start with a few spruce pillars. Add some beautiful chisel tough bricks for decoration at the bottom. And I don't think I'm going to go overboard with the walls as they'll eventually be covered up mostly with chests. So just a little strip at the bottom and that is looking pretty decent. Next we need to add some beautiful hardwood floors. I'm giving it a little bit of a pattern just to be fancy. And of course we are using some spruce and oak slabs. Slabs cut down on construction materials and nothing can spawn under them. So this whole area should be fine. Let's just get the last one in there. And that's looking pretty good. Next let's add a few ceilings. We can't just have cold stone all over the place. And I'm going to use some oak for the ceiling. Now you might have noticed things have taken a spooky turn around here. Look at the cobweb over there. I have added a Halloween texture pack just because I wanted to do something Halloweeny, something spooky, and I must say this is a brilliant texture pack. It hasn't changed much in terms of the look and feel of vanilla Minecraft, but look at this. All of our kitties have been turned into witches and they look so cute with their little hats. Also. There is a graveyard right outside of the ranger station over here and it looks spectacular. Now I'm not 100% sure what this texture pack changes, but I am finding new stuff all the time. One thing I do know though is that it has added a pumpkin hat to the pigs and just look at that absolutely fantastic. It's also made one or two other changes to some of the other mobs and we'll see them later. 
But right now I need to finish my storage room because it's keeping me from building my gunpowder farm and crafting my own rockets. Time for the chests to go in. We'll make it three. Let's see. Uh, I think that's not going to open. Yeah, no, that doesn't open. Okay, so we can only do three layers of chests, but that should still give us plenty of storage space. All of the chests are in. Time to do a little bit of decoration. I'm just adding some upside down stairs right underneath them, just to give it a little bit of pizzazz, a little bit of flair. And I don't think I'm going to go too overboard with decorating this place right now. So the storage space is pretty much finished. As you can see, we've got all of our shulker boxes here. I'm just busy bringing over all of my stuff. However, there's one thing that I still need to do, and that is an elevator for getting in and out of the storage space. Now, originally I had planned to just have some stairs, but I have decided against that. I'm going to make a little single column bubble elevator, and that means I've got a little bit of redstone to do. So let's get started by digging a hole. Next, we'll put down these two pistons and they're going to be swapping out the soul sand and the magma block, which will determine whether the bubble column goes up or down. So let's put down the soul sand over there. And then I've got some magma here somewhere. I've already put some stuff in here. There we go. All right, first try, not too bad. Next, the magma cube goes right there. And now we need to figure out a mechanism that will allow us to swap between the two without the water going everywhere. And it's not a big column. It's just a tiny little one. It shouldn't be too difficult. So let's do some redstone. And once again, this thing is getting completely out of hand. I think I'm making this a lot more complicated than it needs to be. But at least I'm getting a good idea of what I need the thing to do. So yeah, this is completely out of hand. I think I need to tear this up and start working on a new concept. So new concept, very, very successful indeed. It's about a tenth the size of this monstrosity that I had built back here. And I'm actually having to cover this hole back up. But I think there are still a few tweaks that can be made to the new mechanism. I think I can make it a bit more efficient. And there we go, it is pretty much done. I'm still having a few issues with the timing of these blocks, but I'm sure I can figure that out without too much of a hassle. As you can see, there's a bit of a delay between the soul sand and the magma cube. And I think that might let the water seep through, but we're gonna give it a try. And if it doesn't work, we'll figure out the timing a little bit better. So uh, look at it. The walker bucket is a little pumpkin. It's brilliant. Anyway, here we go. That works water elevator works and it swaps back now did that break anything yeah, yeah i see some redstone missing down there and yeah the magma cube doesn't i'm trapped i'm trapped i am stuck underneath in the redstone okay let's just get down there if we can just get flying ah there we go all right so it's washed away some of my redstone i need to repair that and then work on the timing and I think we have it. Let's see. Yeah, that is much better. There's still a slight bit of a delay there. Let's see if that fixes it. Oh, yes, that is beautiful. Okay, so that should do it. Let's close this up. Let's get the water in there, and then we will give it a test run if I stop falling into the freaking redstone. Anyway, here we go. Let's build this up, and let's get this column going. And here's the fruits of our labors. We've got a little puddle here. We go down and we get in. Then when we want to leave, we simply walk over to the pressure plate and it spits us back out at the top. So that is our storage room pretty much done. We've got our entrance the way we wanted it, but I think it's time to get back to the build of the day. And that of course is our gunpowder form. So let's grab our stuff and let's get going. And there we go, we've got a bunch of creepers coming in, they're wearing their jack-o'-lanterns, but that's not gonna save them from my gunpowder farm. And with that done, I think we can improve the efficiency of this farm a little bit by lighting up some of the areas. 
Now there's a ton of caverns and caves underneath the farm. I'm just going to go around placing torches everywhere. Make sure that the entire area is lit up properly and that we don't have any unwanted mobs taking up the cap and taking away from our creeper farm. Hello, skeleton. Let's just take care of you. There we go. Skeleton is gone and we can continue lighting up the area. Now, once we're done lighting up all of these caves, we can light up the area around the tower and that'll give us as little spawning as possible, except for our creeper farm. And we should be getting absolute tons of gunpowder from it. I did a quick little test and it's working beautifully so far. And while we're lighting up, we are getting a ton of resources as well. Just look at that five blocks of diamond right here. And, uh, oh jeez, I am running out of storage space. So let's see, what can I get rid of? I think I'm going to chuck the stone. I've got plenty of stone, so I don't need much more of that. But we've got some gold here as well. I want to take that too, and that means I need to get rid of something else. Do I have any space in any of these shulker boxes left? Um, yeah, okay. We've still got some space in our redstone box, so let's just pop that down there for a second. Then we can put down our shulker box and put the gold and our diamonds in there. Let's just put all of the ores we've collected in there. And by the time we're done, we should have a pretty decent collection of ores. All sorts, redstone, diamond, and of course gold. Now fortunately, we have a light level meter on the server, which allows us to see what places are going to be spawnable or not. But I am running into a bit of a problem here. There are absolute tons of mobs in this cave. And they're just getting more and more as we go on. And for some odd reason, these skeletons are deadly accurate. I mean, come on, three shots in a row. I really do think it's probably time for me to get out of this cave. I just want to light this up a little bit better so that when I come back, we won't have this many mobs to deal with. Because at the moment, it is becoming a little ridiculous. Everywhere I turn, there are a bunch of mobs. And to make things worse, we've got a mineshaft down here as well. And, jeez, oh, okay, yeah, I really, really need to get out of here. Let me just quickly place down a few more torches over here. And then I think I'll just circle back around and get out of here. Oh, no. No, no, where's my shield? My shield? no okay i don't know what happened to my shield uh, anyway no oh no 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 this this is even worse than i thought i am back at spawn and i have no way of getting back home easily i have to walk over a thousand blocks to get back so this is an issue now, being an absolute legend, Skunk has offered to help me, but I remembered that I have hooked up my nether portal to the roof, which means I can get back home quite quickly and get my stuff. Oh, hello there. How are you? Um, love to stay in chat, but I am on a little bit of a mission. Okay, so let's get back home and then we can go and get our stuff back. Hopefully it's still there. And the good thing is that if we travel by the nether roof, the chunks will stay unloaded, so we'll have more time to go and look for our stuff. But still, this is a massive, massive pain. Like a complete tool, I was pretty much carrying everything I own. So, yeah, let's make our way back, and hopefully we won't have any problems getting our stuff back. Because if we lose that stuff, I am in a heap of trouble. So there's the portal, let's go. And we are back and oh no, this is, oh no, this is not going well at all. These skeletons are absolutely deadly. Ah, oh, jeez. Uh, I think this is over. This is over. Yeah, it's over. And I still didn't set my spawn, which means I am, yeah, I am back here. And I think I might need a little bit of help. So let's see. Hi, buddy. What's up? What's going on? Do you need help? <laughs> uh, do you do you know where it is that you got? Do you need your stuff? Is potentially? Or? Uh, kinda, kinda, but um, yeah. Okay. Rex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little ravine okay. down here. Okay. Uh, where are you? Ah, there you are. No, it's right down here. Yeah, it, it's 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 down here. It's down here. Okay. Um, boy. Yeah, I took the waterfall down. 
Okay, there's a skeleton here. I'm gonna die. Oh, I'm, coming. Coming. I'm, 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 I'm gonna die. <laughs> and yeah, it is not going well at all. Hopefully Skunk can grab some of my stuff and get out of there. Even if I can just get a little bit back, then that would be... Hello, hello. Uh, it's frozen. No. Okay, no, there we go. As I said, if Skunk can grab a few of the things... Oh, no. Okay. Okay, it seems Skunk will not be grabbing a few of my things. Um, yeah, now we have to try and get his stuff back as well. Anyway, I'm going to make my way over to the portal and then wait there for Skunk because I have a feeling he will be along in no time at all. I'll just wait outside the portal, which means the chunks will stay unloaded and hopefully that'll give us enough time to get back in there and grab all of our stuff. Why am I not jumping high enough here? Okay. Okay, well, that was annoying. But anyway, let's make our way to the portal and wait for Skunk. And there he is. Oh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> this is this is not going well. The help is... Uh... <laughs> oh, <geez>. Okay, um... <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, so, okay. okay, so... My stuff is right down there. Okay, um... um... All right. I don't. I haven't seen your stuff. I was no. It's it's it, it, it's a little bit. Camming. It's a little bit deeper in. Um, okay. Yeah. So I was free camping. If it's still so there, I, I don't know if it's it. still there. That's the biggest problem. Um, I found but, I found a shulker box that the zombie was holding. Uh, okay. Well. Uh, All sand. Has it really been five minutes? I can't imagine that it has. Am I crazy? <sighs> Ah, jeez. That's insane. Oh, here we go, here we go. Okay, let's see. Uh, well, I'd, I'd assume that mine has been more than five minutes, so... Yeah. Um, so, I, I... I guess mine is gone. Jeez, uh, where the heck is the skeleton? Oops. Oh, there you are. Uh, there's a bunch of... dudes over here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank oh. you very much. Um, oh, there's a... Unfortunately, I hadn't gone to the nether to get some netherite yet. Um, but... Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's... Both... I guess both my alike are gone. Ah, oh, jeez. Sorry about that, bro. That's okay. I have, like, seven. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're... we're... We're basic now. Uh, we have to walk around. Okay, yeah. Um. Oh god, I fell in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> That's always fun. This day's going great. It's I know. going really well, good. It's I'm going so fantastic for me because I needed something for the end of my episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh. Then we can just like sit over here, watch the sunset together. Uh, it's the only good thing yeah. I have in life anymore after losing all my stuff trying to save you. <laughs> hey, I just realized it's my 50th death. Ah, oh, nice, nice. Woohoo, all right, well, it gets something positive out of it, right? <laughs> Is that positive? I don't know. Maybe that's not. Well, but... it, it's a milestone. Let's just call it that. All right. Well, now it's like I can't die anymore, right? Because now no, that's a good number. Yeah, that 50. is a good number. Well, you see, if, if you die now, you have to go for the hundred. 